Let's talk about tight ends now. And there's really uh, one tight end that we could only ask for to be sitting right here at our table as he's about to. And he's the one that just got into the Pro Football Hall of Fame this past summer, Tony Gonzalez. Back to throw over the middle. He wants Gonzalez. An incredible catch inside the 15. Around three Chargers trying to hang on to the ball. Gonzalez has the hat trick. Most touchdowns, most catches, most receiving yards by a tight end in NFL history. He's the best tight end ever to play in this league. Absolutely. Played tight end for seven team seasons, 14 of those 17 seasons, Pro Bowl seasons. A member of the NFL's all-decade team of the 2000s, and he is in the NFL film studio right now. Good to see you, Tony. Good to see you. Congratulations on your your year of immortality growing larger. Well, thank you, Rich. I appreciate it. It's it's a little overwhelming. I don't I don't think anybody ever sets out to do something like that. So they'd be like, yeah, I want to be one of the top hundred players ever. And looking back over my career, seeing how it all started, didn't didn't I mean I was a first round draft choice, but there was a I got benched my twice my my second year in the league, led the NFL and dropped passes. Gonzalez was number one draft choice a year ago for the Kansas City Chiefs. They really expected big things out of him. Gonzalez has dropped a lot of footballs this year, and now he really lacks confidence. It was the best thing that ever happened to me, though. It, it changed my, my career. I just thought everything you did was natural. I swear, I, 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 yeah, I'm like, I got to change my notes. I'm like, okay, this guy came in as like one of the original rebounders, right? Your basketball background and all that stuff, your ability to box out. But you would extend as far. It's, it's one thing to extend your arms to make a catch. It's another to be able to catch it with your arms fully extended, almost elbows fully extended, and still be able to make it. And now they're doing this, and you're still pulling the ball back in. He wants Gonzalez, oh. and up fights the defender for the football. What a quarterback-friendly tight end. Why not look for number 88 every time? I just thought that was something you were born with, but it's something you figured out after I, year two? I figured it out, so I, so I led the NFL in drop passes, and uh, I, I, I'm down, I'm, I'm talking, like, depressed, you know, because we take this thing seriously. I wanted, I wanted to be great, I just wasn't doing it the right way, so... Uh, I got a letter from my brother. He sent me a book uh, by Vince Lombardi. It was a book of quotes. And then off of that, I started getting other uh, coaching books like Lou Holtz, started reading about Pat Riley, Phil Jackson, started reading about the greats of all time, like how they worked. I started figuring out, like, I can't just show up at practice and think I'm going to be great. It's like, what are you doing before practice? What are you, what are you doing after practice? Uh, and I started with this whole routine of, of greatness is what I called it. You got time? Yeah. You want to get some catches, man? You want to work on some routes? I'll get you the routes. Good. We do this every day, Pink is free. And like, I'm not talking like catching balls off a jug or just sitting there talking. It was like chin strap, mouthpiece in, uh, focused catches, like in the moment, coming out of the break. I'd stay out after practice and get another 100 catches, 150 catches. That's so And that's kind of where it all started, like just, just repetition, and it changed my career. I would never have done that if I didn't get embarrassed. That's kind of why, what I figured out. It took me a while, but I figured it out. Yeah, well, you certainly rebounded in 2000 when you know, I think it was 12 for 150 and a couple touchdowns against us. <laughs> <laughs> Back to throw Gerback. Pump fakes, looks, dumps it over the middle. Touchdown to Tony Gonzalez. And suddenly the Patriots find themselves in a little bit of trouble. And I've had my worst games as a career against the New England Patriots, like my lowest stats statistically. Uh, but I've also had my best stats. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, and Atlanta, Atlanta was another 12 for 150 and <laughs> a couple touchdowns, too. So. Ryan, right side. Gonzalez wide open. Cuts in at the five. Touchdown, Tony Gonzalez. He's jamming me and letting me go. I'm running the corner. It's there. Gonzalez, 12 catches for 149 yards, which is a career high, and two touchdowns. Just about the time we think we got you doubleton figured out. The, there's some other way you beat the double team, and then they outlawed the the punt return double team we put on you down in Atlanta. They got rid of that the next year, so we couldn't, you know, we put two guys right on the line of scrimmage. Well, we remember it well. I think it was the yeah, Sunday we night do game. That anymore. Yeah, so we can't do that anymore. So then he retired, thank God. So yeah. that, that took us off the hook. <laughs> Leave it up to him to put the the bracket coverage on me, man. That was that was something else. <laughs> They literally, Absolutely. right, at the line of scrimmage, like, okay, we always hear the story that certain players, Bill's not going to let them beat them, right? But that was, like, unfair. Tony Gonzalez has been such a threat in this game. They are now double-teaming him off the line of scrimmage. 
Gonzalez was mauled on that play. It's like a gunner on a punt team right now. <laughs> They're doing. Look at that. I've only seen that done on Calvin Johnson on the goal line. That's the only two in the history of the NFL, the only two times I've ever seen it. It was no fun for me. I was like, this is not fun. I want to go home. This I, is, I just I kept thinking, anything. how did you play defense behind that? Well, you were short, but, I mean, it wasn't going to be Tony, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and I'll go back to what I said. You know, when I vote for the top 100 players, tight ends, if we double covered them on every single play so they couldn't get the ball, right. check, vote. <laughs> and he's one of them right there. Absolutely. Tony is really the, the kind of a prototype tight end uh, in that – he can get open, he can catch the ball, he can score points, you know, and gain yards. So that's really what football is about. But one thing about our position, this is why I think the tight ends come in. Gatesy, Jimmy Graham, we're the power forwards on our team. I mean, we're all like 6'5". And the former basketball player, Cal Berkeley, stops the football over the crossbar. Charles Barkley's tall enough, but it didn't work for us. And so I would have loved to have gone to the NBA, you know, back in, back in college. But there was, you know, they were saying you're, you're six foot five, you're six foot four, you're six foot six, and so we have a chip on our shoulder, and we're used to playing against guys that are six foot ten, and getting open and getting the ball down in the post or taking them off the dribble, and so now you put me on a football field and I'm going against a guy who's five foot eleven. Yeah. Like you got no shot. Throw the ball up in there, like you said. Just throw the ball up in there. I'm going to out jump him no matter what. I, it, I, it's, I love it's no, the it's fact that you wanted to play in the NBA, so you had to settle for being one of the top 100 players <laughs> in the National <laughs> Football League history. Right. Most career receptions, most career receiving yards by tight end ever. Let's get you now a new member of the NFL 100 team teammate, none other than the great Charger himself, Kellen Winslow, at six foot five. 250 pounds. Kellen Winslow became the prototype for today's receiving tight ends. He was inducted in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1995, and I'm sure had an influence on you, Tony. No question about that, right? Yeah, huge. Like, like I said before, going into my second year when I dropped all those balls, that third year uh, we got a new, we had a coaching change. This guy named Gunther Cunningham. He was our head coach, and he was on the staff with uh, with the Chargers uh, back when Kellen was on there. And so I said, Hey, coach, you mind getting me some film? on Kellen Winslow. And he's like, sure, you know, I'll get it for you. And I remember he got me this tape, it was VHS back then, and I used to watch that tape religiously. Watch the athleticism, the way he would run routes, the way he would catch the ball. And I'm from LA, and so, you know, growing up in the 80s, of course I knew who Kellen was. And so he, he's, he was the greatest of all time. That's, that was the guy, that was the benchmark of all tight ends coming in, you want to be like this guy and from a receiving standpoint. So uh, he had a huge influence on I me. Mean, he, he was that guy, just like I always talk about, studying that Kellen Winslow tape. Uh, and that's right when my career talk, took off. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but it's when I took an offseason to really see what, he, what made him so special. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that was a powerful team. But Winslow being in the middle of that, of that offense, along with Muncie, really created a lot of problems. I remember my first year at the Giants when I went out there, I was a special teams coach. And I was so tired of hearing that San Diego Supercharger song. I still hear it ringing in my ear. They had 41 points at halftime. I don't think they ever stopped playing the stupid song. I mean, it was just, it didn't never stop. San Diego Superchargers. <laughs> it's still, game time it's now. still there. It's, it's, it's still almost it's still happening. Song. One of the greatest tight ends of all time is John Mackey, and he was the prototype for today's modern pass-catching tight ends. He played 10 seasons with the Colts and Chargers, and it was a member of the NFL's 50th anniversary all-time team, so now double it, and he's part of the NFL 100 all-time team. When Mackey went to Syracuse, you know, they have a great legacy there of their number 44 players, Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, Floyd Little. When Mackey got there, they gave him 88 because they thought he'd be twice as good. And it might be close. He's just dynamic. Uh, you know, you talk about guys that run through the whole team or run through half the team. Well, uh, that, that's about right for Mackey here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, See ya. And his own Seven, guy. Uh, you know, eight. Uh, wow. I don't know. I mean, you talk about running through the whole team. That's running through the whole team to me. <laughs> wow. Just in terms of looking bigger than most out there, does that look like Gronk a little bit to you there at all, Coach? Or? It looks like Gronk, but this, I mean, this guy is, is one of the most athletic players on the field. You know, and soft hands. Um, you know, you could see, the, I mean, it's a great throw. 
But, you know, Mackie hauls this in so easily. It's just effortless. This guy is a nightmare with the ball in his hands. John Mackey is an absolute nightmare. Watch him go, and good luck. See ya. Wow. Yeah, that's they not gonna happen. About. <laughs> that's right. Man. I mean, I love this team, and I watched a lot of John Mackey, but I'm learning a lot watching this. And the next tight end was a true tough guy. His name is Mike Ditka. The original Iron Mike out of Aliquippa, PA. Billy Wade finds his great rookie Mike Ditka open. Iron Mike completes a 36 yard TD strike. Ditka played 12 seasons in the National Football League, equally as effective as a blocker and a receiver. Tomac drops back to pass, that's up, pass to in, touchdown! It's the hammer, Mike Ditka! He was the first tight end ever inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Chris Collinsworth. This is a no-brainer, huh? A no-brainer. Uh, whether you're talking about a player and, you know, right from his rookie year on, exploded. We've seen the scenes where he made the catch and <laughs> runs over the guy and the whole thing as a coach. Coached arguably, my friends in Miami won't agree with me, but arguably the, the best team in NFL history, the 85 Bears team. Uh, but I worked with him at NBC. I knew his reputation, so I'm trying to build anything of a relationship, you know? So at the end of the year, I, I just wrote him a Christmas card. I said, Coach, I just really appreciate the fact that from day one, you've treated me like, you know, one of your guys on the set. I just really appreciate it. Merry Christmas. That was the gist of it. So I see him back on the set the next week, and he goes just like this. He goes, hey, hey, I got your Christmas card. I cried, and that was it. That was all he said. <laughs> I swear to goodness. He was the sweetest guy despite all the gruff. Mm -hmm. He was, he, honestly, he's still one of my favorite people I've ever known in the NFL. The latest member to be revealed in the NFL 100 all-time team is none other than Rob Gronkowski, who makes this as one of the greatest tight ends of all time, quite simply. Yo, we're on the big screen right now. Give me a chest ball. Boom! <laughs> Over the shoulder with a defender in his back. It was like a man through boys. He is the total package at tight end. Making the most of his nine seasons in 2011, he set the single season record for a tight end with 17 receiving touchdowns. He owns the record for postseason receiving yards by a tight end, and he went out on top, retiring after winning his third Super Bowl. Brady sees it, and it's a 29 yard strike to the big boy, his favorite tight end, the old world tight end. What a catch! We found a way, we, we found did. our identity. Yeah. That's all we needed to do. Yeah. And you did it. Keep on grinding. <laughs> That's all it was. <laughs> We've talked about medical reports earlier on uh, in this show about Anthony Munoz. There was one on him oh, coming boy. out of Arizona. So what, what, what was everything going on with Gronk from the beginning? Yeah, Coach? Rob was kind of a shot in the dark. He, uh, he came up on his pre-draft visit, uh, had a bad visit. Uh, we put him in a room, came back, he was asleep on the floor, uh, didn't make a very good impression. He was what? He was <laughs> sleeping on the floor? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I brought him in, we just kind of, you know, we're getting ready to, you know, have meet with the coaches and go through, and then fell asleep on the floor. <laughs> it happens! Like, yeah. oh boy, <laughs> you know, so. Okay, uh, what was he doing the night before? Kind of got a slow start uh, there. <laughs> Uh, went to Arizona, didn't do much as a freshman, had a decent year as a sophomore, caught 30 passes, uh, and then misses junior year with back surgery, and then came out early for the draft. So there wasn't much to go on. We traded up for him. And we just kind of, you know, bet that he would come through, and, and he certainly did big time. You know, he was a tremendous blocker. that. We got Gronk. I'm telling you, you can say what you want. This guy, not a lot of tight ends are willing to put that effort every game in and blocking. Gronk has been doing it his whole career. Oh. Dean Ellis taking off and in to the end zone for the touchdown. Woo! Woo I just blocked him, baby. I just blocked him one-on-one. -on -one. He's a great kid. He, whatever his public persona is uh, on the dance floor, at a party, or whatever, uh, in the building, there's no better teammate. He works extremely hard. See the late hands there by Rob? You never showed you were catching the ball. That's why I couldn't make a play on it. A couple guys made a couple plays on me. 
Uh, if I bring them out? Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. So I learned that. So late, you know, he never had a chance to do it. It's a nice job. He had a great catch radius uh, for kind of as stiff as he is. He could get balls on his shoelaces. He could get them over his head, and he could get them behind him. Tom pumps. He throws down the middle for Gronkowski. Oh, Somehow makes the catch. He can get in with his left hand. Unbelievable. How the did you catch that? It was a ridiculous catch on the Chuck and Chris. Unbelievable. 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 That was one of the best catch I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he had a great catch against Buffalo where he spun all the way around, one handed it, you know, and toe tapped it down. Pass. What a catch. Gronkowski, touchdown. Where'd he go, Rob? Let's go, buddy. And when you see a guy score a touchdown, he'd be the first one there to congratulate him. Well, it's another tight end, a running back, whatever. Yeah. He, you know, and then, of course, he loves to spike. And when he spikes, you got to get out of the way. I, the <laughs> biggest thing I told him was, Rob, make sure that the official is out of the way. Because if you spike it and it hits him, and we get a 15-yard penalty because you spike the ball into the official, I said, this is going to be the end of your spiking. So, you know, he always kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. looks. And, and then he spikes it. And I swear, I'm worried he's going to throw his shoulder out. And the earthquake spike. Dude, you spiked that ball so hard. I came right to me. I tried to catch it. I couldn't catch it. He's like a Shaquille O'Neal. He's just this, this big, enormous guy that is unstoppable. You can't stop him. Probably the most dominant player. Fouled on every possession. Fouled on every play. He's just right. so big. Uh, where I would be like, okay, maybe I'm a Kim Olajuwon. A little bit more of that type of game. When Gron got the ball, he is running through you. He's running over you. He, it just seemed like there was no, there was disregard for, for personal preservation. <laughs> like, he was going for it, no matter what. And that's the only drawback. When I was watching his career, I was like, man, I don't know how long he's going to last because, you know, big tree fall hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's a big old guy, and I remember he'd make these catches and just fall down. I was like, oh, my God, that's got to hurt. Well, and you heard Coach say that uh, Gronk came up and made great and big games. Uh, obviously, you on Sunday night with Al had a ton of, of Gronk's games. Do you have one that stands out? In the Colt game we did on Sunday night, that was, oh my there, was a, there was a kid, uh, one of the defensive backs, that was talking trash to him. Sergio Brown, I think, is, is who it was. And he kept talking trash, and all of a sudden, Gronk said, that's enough. And he goes out, <laughs> and he drives this kid, I mean, through the end zone, out the back, 10 yards out of bounds, and then throws him. You came off the field and we're doing this. Like, he's been talking to me this whole game. And it was revenge time. Yes, he was just yapping to me the whole time, and uh, that's why I took him and threw him out of the club, out of the end zone. So, you know, when the you guy's the yapping. You were the bouncer? That was the bouncer. I picked him up, <laughs> tossed him out of the club on that one touchdown. It was the greatest quote I ever heard. I had to throw him out of the club, and he uh, did. That's he awesome. Did. Well, I mean, and then just to wrap this whole thing up in terms of personality, I have to ask you too, uh, Bill, that uh, at, at the uh, opener, home opener for the Red Sox this season with a Lombardi trophy in his hands and Julian Edelman just flinging a baseball in his direction, he swung the Lombardi trophy and actually made contact and dented it. Did you see does, that? I didn't see it, but it does not surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you'll see at one Patriot place, you'll see a nice dent. It's dancing. now the most famous Lombardi trophy <laughs> yes. of them all. I'd rather see that one than any of them. Yeah.